Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Blood Bowl Chaos Edition. We're still in the Legacy League this week. It's the Hammersjörg Destroyers against the Ekron Infiltrators, the Skaven monstrosities of block and plus strength and all sorts of horrible mutations. Not to mention tickly bad smell coming off the gutter runner. Despite all that, with my TV 1050 team against the 1740 Skaven, we're winning! 1-0 to the Norse team. Well, actually sort of 1-0 if you count the injuries as well. We've lost a lineman, not a big problem because I am now receiving and I can bring my thrower on to replace him. On the other side of the, side of the game, there were two KO'd linemen, one of them has come back. So the Skaven team is also up to full strength. This is to my advantage. I'm receiving, so I'm going to get the ball, and I get to attack first, which means I get to neutralise whatever I want to. Most likely is Ratoga, who's been so, so reliable thus far. Um, he's knocked down a bunch of players. I think he got the injury, even. And then spent three turns lying on the floor, refusing to get up. So, swings and roundabouts. This time he gets Morg and his beautiful purple and yellow boots straight to the face. So hopefully we can put him down and keep him there a bit longer. I get my thrower, Sven, with newly christened with his shorthand skill to receive the ball. And the Skaven kick. Cheering fans. So both teams get a re-roll. Again, that's a lot of re-rolls actually. It's the second time. <coughs> so we start early. Morg, that's a little bit of a letdown. But it forces the Ratoga to blitz. And that stops other blitzes where it could allow players to dodge through here more easily. Alright, we get a lineman down. That's pretty cool. Finally, we get something. And we finally also get down the other lineman. Two out of three. Oh, dead. Dead, dead, dead. Does he stay dead? Does he stay dead or is he okay? Come on, come on, come on. Yes. My first murder from a mere lineman. And he gets a level up from that as well. He's six out of six star player points. Fantastic. And now with a little bit of luck, my Berserker can get the Storm Vermin off the pitch as well. Come on, you can do it, fella. Defender down. Well, I shouldn't really complain about that. He's stunned as well. Follows up. That's working perfectly so far. So now we mark up his other players. We've done all the easy stuff first, which is fighting people with two dice. Basic moves are pretty easy, because they don't cost anything. And there's no one on the touch line. So this is effectively the front line of a cage now. All I need to do is pick up the ball. So even Agility 3 has its benefits. Kind of dangerous. I can be reached by the gutter runner. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 to get to him. Which is why I put the lineman in the way. So he has to not only dodge once, dodge again. But he has to get around this guy, which is going to take him a long snaking route. He can't do it. Strength 4 Storm Vermin at the back. That's absolutely fine. That's all I wanted him to do. He's taking up a block rather than have this Strength 4 guard guy come down here and attack my thrower. Not sure what he's hoping to achieve with that because no one else can reach my thrower. He's just put a well, he's going to get blocked or blitzed. And it is his basic gutter runner as well. So he doesn't have anything like sidestep to keep him safe. Mm. Interesting. Having said that, it's been a long time since I've played a Skaven team. Uh, let me quickly count something like 7, 8, which I've played in real life, not on the, not on the computer like I am doing now. And this guy has taken the infiltrators through two, at least two other seasons before this one. So he, he certainly knows what he's doing. At glance, though, 
I wouldn't have put the gutter runner there because he's just going to get beaten up by the lineman. Mm. I see what he was trying to do. Blitz the lineman with his rat ogre. Realistically, with break tackle and strength 5, he should have made that dodge. That was very, very unfortunate. But, you know, such is the problem of loner. And that would have meant that with he would have had two tackle zones on my thrower. One at the front and one at the side, so he wouldn't be able to dodge away anywhere nearly easily. As it stands though, my thrower gets away and he's got all his friends around him. Uh, realistically, I don't play for time. I have a lot of block players, but then so does he. And he's also got the frenzy players and the dodging players. I can't afford to sit on my laurels and let him come at me. Not like with a dwarf team who've got the tackle and the thick skull to take it. The Norse need to keep moving and keep pressing. However, for the meantime, we've got a cage with an ogre in it. What more could you want? Apart from a cage with four ogres, I guess. <laughs> Actually, that's a terrible idea. I've tried that with an ogre team. You've got four players on the pitch with um, the idiot skill they get. I forget what it's called. Most most of the, ca the cage isn't going anywhere from turn to turn. So you don't particularly want to be doing that all the time. It's nearly just as good to have a team half made out of snotlings. So even if they get knocked down, you've got replacements and the cage will move where you want it to said before this game is about having reliable players getting them to do what you want while your opponent doesn't okay pushed he can follow up but he can't attack me again there's a go for it for him to make the block you ran out of movement points you have to have a movement point left to be able to frenzy into someone <clears throat> which a lot of people don't realize they seem to think that the frenzy block is free it isn't you have to have movement left and if you are going for it, you can fail your go for it roll. I have done it often enough with troll slayers to know exactly that's what's what happens. So now the Skaven player is in trouble. He couldn't get that player down. Morgenthorg is still waiting to get his hands dirty. I've still got three free players around my thrower to hand off to or to move out of the way. In a good position to potentially score again. All I have to do is keep this rat ogre off my back and watch out for the storm vermin on the right because he's the strength four guy. Ooh, dead lineman. Rerolls into one point of movement allowance lost. Uh, it's, it's a good thing I kept the apothecary back, but I feel I may actually have just hired a vet. First broken leg, and then a broken leg, and he tries to put the guy down. Ah oh, well, at least that's not going to happen again. <clears throat> so I've still got my players. I've, I've still got 13 of them on the bench, in some form or another. All is not lost for the next game. And now I have two sacrificial players who can go on the front line so all is well it happens a lot with Norse anyway people get injured because they're only armor 7 it might as well be people who already have injuries so I'm not losing something valuable a lot of people don't like doing that because when they do keep an injured player on the team they're risking keeping oh hello there goes the rat ogre thank you very much Morg see what I mean the guy just does not let me down. He's great. But anyway, as I was saying, people don't like keeping injured players on their team, even just on the roster, because of the, well, even chance that a badly injured and crippled player is going to end up with the MVP and gain some star player points that they can't really use. Or if they do, it's just a negated injury and they get back to normal. So if I've lost a movement allowance, I might get that back later. And I've got a perfectly normal player, albeit one who's more expensive than usual. 
And that's a benefit to my opponent then, because I've got a guy who's lost a movement point and gained a movement point, but his value increases, and that works out as more inducements for my opponent. So, I perhaps don't want to keep too many of them on the team, but a couple certainly isn't a bad thing at this point, where I'm still saving up money for more expensive players, like the werewolf, the earth, the Ulfverner. Or, as will hopefully be the case, a troll. Okay, troll? No, yeti! Go on to yeti. That's right. They use, they use the troll model, it's the same sort of thing. And they both kind of suck, so it's easy to get them mixed up. Ooh, okay, we get a bad injury off the Morgue, a KO off the Berserker. Suddenly, it swung to the Norse again. I even manage a dodge roll. Cage in the middle of the pitch, receiver to throw the ball to, badly injured Skaven left, right and centre. Oh, I've got a good feeling about this. We can score. We should be able to score from this. The more Starflight points on my thrower, the better because he's awesome. Push. Okay, that's fine. He's still in a cage, and he's used his blitz. So that guy's going to get pulped, hopefully. <coughs> uh, another thing I might not have done with my Norse team is to take the runners. Now, this guy has served me well. He's about to level up because he scored my touchdown for this game and he's scored touchdowns in other games but he's got nothing really that a lineman doesn't. Alright, he's movement 7. Didn't really help. It was the difference between a go for it and two go for it. I've paid a premium for the Dauntless skill which actually I don't want to be relying on. Where are I to make this Norse team again? Uh, probably a thrower Nine linemen and a werewolf of Ulferna, and then take the extra reroll because at the minute I've only got four out of my inducements. I should only have two. So the slow and merciless crawl of the pitch. Another injury on his god awful thrower as well. Pinch nerve, miss next game. Excellent work from the lineman. Grimbrander. So that hunches my entire cage up forward at some point, because more can go there. I need to move the lineman back into the corner actually, that'd be ideal. We get him in the middle, have a guy on each corner. All is well, because I've got these guys who can pick up the slack. Oh, well maybe not, I've done the cross formation again. Asking for trouble. <coughs> Unfortunately, that, however, is the end of the match. Uh, due to time constraints, my opponent had to leave. And to be honest with you, I didn't want to let him just quit. He's played a really tough game so far. It's not fair that he gets no money and no MVP. So we just we just skipped to the end of the match. I'm sorry that's cut short, guys. We'll see if we can do something else for you for entertainment value. But that's the end of the game. 1-0 to the Hammersburg Destroyers. Injuries abound. Lots of money. Star player points all over the show. Two wins out of three in the Legacy League for the newbie Norse team. We're on a roll, boys. Let's keep it going. 11 out of 20? Really? I thought there was a bit of back and forth there, but whatever. Um, the thrower, who got badly injured, gets a level up. He's now level 5. What do you do? And my lineman, I have no idea who that guy is. He levels up though, so, you know, good for him. And we say destroyers. Two wins, one loss. That puts us, I think, third in the table out of eight teams, out of eight teams, I think. Great start for the newbie Norse. Well, that's the end of the match. Thank you very much for watching everyone. We'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Hello again guys, this is The Illusionist. Not quite gone yet. Uh, this is a bit of a short video, so I'm going to quickly show you a couple more little Blood Bowl secrets that you might not be aware of. Something to learn, hopefully take to your next match. I've quickly thrown together an Ogre versus Dark Elf game to best try and display the two little tricks I'm going to show you. 
The first one is on the Dark Elf team, which you can make use of with your Assassin. You notice here, this guy's end up with the Multiple Block skill. What this normally does is it lets you throw a block against two other players. They get to add plus two to their strength in defense, but if you're a really big, tough player, you can potentially knock down and injure two other of your opponent players. What a lot of people don't realize, or maybe just haven't really thought about before, is that the Dark Elf team's assassin can combine multiple block with stab. Think about the implications. You're basically throwing a block at two players with no downside. Stabbing doesn't take strength into account, so that's going to remain a strength one character. You just roll armor straight away for them. Watch this. Do you want to use multiple block? Yes, I do. Choose the second target. I'm going to pick this guy. Do I want to perform a stabbing attack? Yes, I do. You, you can see there, I've knocked the guy down. Immediately launch into the second attack on the second player. With Also with a stab. Or I can do a normal block if I want to. I'm not going to do that. And look at that. One block two players down and at no point was I at risk of rolling a skull or a double skull or both down. It's tricky to do because you only get multiple block on a double for a skill roll but bear it in mind it can be very lethal. Be right back in a minute when I've set up the second little trick. Okay guys so here's the second trick I want to show you. We've got here a bad situation for the ogre player. The Dark Elves have got the ball, and they are within striking range of a touchdown. They're deep in the opponent's half, they're surrounded by a cage, and even Ogres can't really blitz their way through this to take down the Blitzer and get the ball off him. So here's what you do. What a lot of people don't realise is that if you throw a player with the right stuff skill, and they accidentally scatter and hit another player, both players make an armor roll and potentially get injured. It's like being stabbed, they're automatically knocked down and they're probably going to be injured from it. What a lot of people don't realize is you can deliberately target enemy players with your own thrown players. Think about that just for a minute. In fact, don't even think about it, I'm going to show you. So we choose the destination of the Snotling. It's a 6 plus throw because it's pretty hard to do. Even at short range it's 5 plus because Ogres are pretty not very agile. But you can do it. I'm getting to the ball character. Ooh, oh, do I want to re-roll that? Yes. Come on. We Missed. Okay. That didn't go too well. That's why we have more Ogres. Damn it, only once per turn. Uh, be right oh, back. Okay, let's try that again. Throw teammate. Choose destination Snotling. The Blitzer. He gets it. He makes a throw. Oh, come on. Do it. Missed. Ah, back again. Come on, man. Hit something. Ah, oh, re-rolls now. I've got to do something. Oh, I missed again. No, don't care about that. Uh, yeah, hold on. Come on, guys, you're embarrassing me. So let's try for this guy. It's, a, it's, a, it's an easier throw. Come on, man, you let me down. Bonehead! Ah! Come on, guys, hit something. I don't even care at this point. Just hit someone. Middle of the mob. Can we hit this guy? Please. Let's try again. I can't possibly fail this time, can I? Well, the main thing is, he survived. Hold on. Please, just hit someone. He'll do. Hit him. Bam! Nope, missed. 
Ah, the hell? running out of snotlings. Get the assassin, come on. Splat. There we go. We got the guy. Okay. Not the most reliable way of dealing with anything in the world. But you can see my point. We got him in the end. Hit him in the head. Straight armor roll. And I've knocked him down to boot. You always knock them down, even if you don't hurt them. It's probably the least reliable tactic in the world. But hey, you never know. If you know it and your opponent doesn't, it might just save you one day. Good luck with that, guys. Have fun. I'm the Illusionist. Hopefully I'll see you again for another game of Blood Bowl. Take care. Bye-bye.